Hello and welcome. This is Mike Hamilton from Trade the Easy Way giving you an update on the 30th November, just a couple of hours before US growth figures come out. Uh, and then we've got monthly jobs on Friday. So the question in my mind, I'm sure the question in your mind is, can this market sustain this push higher into year end? And what can we expect next year? Well, I'm just going to concentrate on for the coming days and weeks um, and answer the question about can we push higher into the year end. This is the dollar index. So dollar index pushed up high into March. It sat on this trend line. So after a big push higher, it consolidated into that trend line and then went on a, a decent run. All these pullbacks were bought until we eased off into the autumn. And that easing off gave the US indices and the markets um, time to catch a breath and push up. So you can see the divergent relationship with this powerful strong dollar with the market. So it stands to um, reason if this dollar can, picks up on the back of this data, particularly into year end, then that could mean this rally is over and done with. My strategy for the moment, in terms of, specifically in terms of UK stocks, is to sell into this push higher uh, and go into the year end flat, uh, or mainly flat, mainly cash. Cash is a position, and that's a position I'm going to take as we get into the back end of um, this period and we start to ease into next year. All right, so that's the dollar index on the daily. So this is the NASDAQ. What the NASDAQ does, the rest of the market tends to follow. And this NASDAQ has not pushed up anywhere near as well as the Dow has. Why? Because profitability in the big techs is under question. So we've got this um, long pause here in October, November, the big push up into this 2021, 2022 trend line, sorry. So we've broke above it uh, in the late summer, but we failed to break back above it in this push higher. So this does not bode well for the market. If this NASDAQ can't get above this 12,000, sustain, sustain 12 and a half thousand, then we're gonna hit the lows and, and go lower. All right, so this is, this is real decision day here because we're sitting on support, having pushed up here, but we've got resistance above and support underneath us. So whichever way we come out of this is potentially going to be the heads up for the rest of the market. So this week is crucial to answer that question about what we can do in towards the um, year end. If this is a bullish consolidation, then this line needs to hold and we need to close at least above um, 11 and a half. We're 11 and a half right now as we, as we speak, give or take a few pips. All right, so that is on the line. So here's the big push, uh, and then we've done nothing since that big push on the 10th. And here we are, month end, just about to go into December uh, in, in this apex. So be warned. The FTSE, however, has benefited from the strong dollar. There's a lot of FTSE 100s that trade in the dollar. So the strong dollar has lifted this FTSE and kept this FTSE very close to uh, 2022 highs, this year's highs. In fact, this year's highs are uh, 76.90 on April uh, 9th. So we 75.50 against 76.90 high. So again, we're right up against this light, this um, resistance there at 75.78. We're just literally come in contact with it today on the 30th November. So again, if we close underneath this 7500, this FTSE is due a decent pullback. Uh, if we can sustain 75.80, then we're going to go back to 7700. I think it's worth looking at this Chinese index. Uh, we are sitting right up against this resistance. So as the Chinese seem to be reducing the lockdown, uh, that's giving this market a lift. So every, everything's on the line, as is so much the case, so often the case 
and you've got big data coming out. So this 12800 has got a hold. If we can pop up here and come back and test it, then we could potentially go back up to 14 and a half and 15. Why am I looking at the Chinese index? Because what the global markets do matters. You know, Chinese is an important market. Uh, even the rough trade relations that seem to exist at the moment, uh, if the Chinese market can pull up and the Asian markets can pull up, then uh, that gives the rest of us a chance. Right, quick look at the other markets. I think this oil um, is really good. You can see this short term trend line. It's an potentially an expanded triangle. So I think we've got invents today, apart from all the data that's going on. This is the launch pad for the January push up into 128, I think it was. Then we saw a series of lower highs as this came back down to earth. Um, but this push underneath, I back, bring it back into January lows and the push up, I think that's sustainable. So uh, we've got a one, two, three wave correction into this January low, and now we are getting what looks like an impulsive wave back into 85. So I think these dips are viable. If we close above 85, then I think we're going to see 90 and 100 as we get into back into the year and into next year. And that's typical of the oil cycle. So I would look to buy um, 75. 77 uh, if I can to see that uh, push gold um, very nice one two three wave into this uh, resistance area so we fell short of that resistance we're sitting on that support so uh, I think we are due another leg into 1800 and possibly 1850. If we close under 1735, which is this support area here, then this is coming back down again and it's not going to last. If you look at the, I think the monthly chart is really interesting. It's the last day of the month, so let's look at the monthly. Uh, now you can see I've isolated this 1540 and 2075. Um, this is a huge buy signal here in the gold. So on the monthly chart, if we come right into that trend line resistance, but if we can hold this, um, pull back into that apex of 1700, I think we can then go up there and potentially higher and find 2300 is my target on that. All right, um, so any pullbacks, Possibly into next week. Uh, again, this this is going. I think it's going to rely on the dollar. Surprise, surprise. If we see a, a big push in the dollar, then this could just fall out, break this low, and fall back into this support, this lower support down there at fifteen hundred. All right. So just keep an eye on that, and I'll update you. But at the moment, I think that the pullbacks are definitely viable. And 1730, 1745 is the pullback right now. If we see that um, in the next day or two, uh, let, let's stick with monthly charts. Uh, I'm, I've, I've scanned all the usual stocks that we look at, all the proxies, all the Barclays, the HSBC, the Lloyds, um, the IT stocks we follow, the house builders, the retailers. Um, and overall, the, as you can see from that FTSE, the markets are holding up. They're just not very exciting. They're just pretty flat, knocking up against support and resistance in quite shallow ranges. My prediction for next year is that we're going to have somebody quoted um, saying that the, the recession will be inch deep but a mile wide. And, and that seems to sort of resonate with me. I, in other words, I think we're going to be a long slow grind next year but not necessarily a deep recession that, that's all for me that's all going to um, be dependent on the rate cycle if the rate cycle continues higher and these commodities stay high and force inflation higher then uh, then I think that you know, we are in trouble going to have a deeper recession if they back off on the interest rates and potentially even reduce them next year which is a possibility, then that could 
uh, allow the markets to breathe and um, sustain themselves. Otherwise, so we're right on the line, but uh, we, we, I feel, and most people feel that we are going to have a recession next year, particularly in the UK, because we're more, much more vulnerable with the impact of Brexit. Um, uh, it's just a question of how deep it is. This is Lloyds Bank. So all I'm going to look at here today to finish this video is Lloyds Bank. Why? Because it's just one of the many, many bellwethers we look at in the UK. So this is the monthly chart. And so this is the second higher close in Lloyds Bank. So I think any pullback to 40, 43, assuming we close here, is viable for us to see 56 plus. Um, the 2019 high is 59, but the main error is, is, is 55. All right, so the volumes have been better, not brilliant. I think this is symptomatic of what's happened in the UK this year. Um, overall, things, most good stocks with good balance sheets have held up. They've just not been very exciting. They've been pretty flat overall. Um, and if you're a swing trader, then you should have done okay. If you're an investor, you probably not, your account's probably not showing much at all. Um, this has not been a year to, to sit and hold. Uh, swing traders have had the upper hand. Right, more on this. I've been working on um, the workshop I'm gonna do to plot for next year and plan for next year and to talk to you about how the support I'm gonna offer next year, the back end of this year and into next. More on that very soon. In the meantime, be careful. Let's see what we get out of today. Um, if we do sustain these highs and we can get, a, uh, and the market likes the job numbers on Friday, then I think that will have an influence on the UK and Europe and beyond. All right, hope that helps. Stay tuned and stay safe. Bye.